And then, of course, we want to, now here's going to be a real difficult situation. We got to radically transform our ideas about money. Let's see. And uh, this boils down to getting rid of three concepts in our mentality. Get rid of the word charge. Get rid of the word pay. Get rid of the word worth. So, for example, uh, translate these messages into giraffe. Uh, the message that radically transformed my consciousness about money and led me to, from that moment to this, really try to remain a consciousness every moment about money. This happened one day. I was at the office. It was a Saturday. I was in private practice. I had uh, two secretaries, but on Saturday only one. So on Saturday, she, the one secretary goes to get lunch. And she said, uh, Marshall, watch the phone while I'm gone. I'm going out to get us some lunch. And she goes, and the phone rings. And uh, it's a woman. And uh, she says, uh, my, my pediatrician has suggested that we come in and with my seven-year-old son who's having trouble in school. I had written a book called Diagnostic Teaching at the time. It was bringing in a lot of people whose kids were having problems in the school. And so this was a regular thing. So, uh, And my pediatrician said we need to bring the child in and have him examined by Dr. Rosenberg. And I said, this is Marshall Rosenberg. When would you like to bring him in? And she said, uh, I, I first need to, to ask a question. What was the question? And that changed my, it, I can't tell you how radically that changed my use of money now in the last 35 years. I saw the obscenity of it. It helped me see why I felt so strongly when I read in the paper a couple days earlier that somebody died being transferred from one hospital to another after they'd been in a car wreck because they didn't have money for the first hospital. They didn't have insurance or money. And so they were going to ship them over to the public hospital and they died en route. And why I hadn't seen the obscenity of how we handled money until that moment. Because I just... I was in private practice, you charge so much for your services, da, da, da. And now for the first time, my God, this woman is thinking that I will only give her service with her child if she gives me money, a certain amount of money. And from that moment to this, I've tried to liberate myself from the world economic system. And to get the words charge, pay, worth. I try never to pay anything, to pay for anything. I try never to charge for anything or to think of anything as worth something. So let's see if you can transform those words. What would she have said if she had been a giraffe? Instead of what do you charge, what would she have said? Both, I feel really concerned because I have a real need for my child to come and see you. And... Um, I'm wondering if, uh, if, if you would be willing to, to see my child. And um, it, 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 as you see this, as you see my child, um, knowing that I um, cannot pay money to you, uh, but I am, yeah, that I cannot give you any money, um, would you be willing for me to <coughs> contribute to your well-being in some other way? I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Did she have no money? Uh, she had very little. She had very little. Uh, I'm sure she would have given me the money whatever that I asked for. But it would have been a real sacrifice. I mean, she would have had to sacrifice a lot of other things. And, uh, I think I would, um, if somebody was asking me how much do I charge for my services, I might say to them, um, well, how much can you afford? Or, or what value do you place on what I will be giving you in this situation? And you know, what would you like to contribute? 
that comes closer because, you see, if I'm using giraffe, I never want people to pay money. That's obscene to me now. I want to give them the service. I want them to know that if I have something that serves life, I'll be glad to give it. And most of the time now, I can give it because other people have given me the money to get there. So other, other people's giving me the money allows me to give this to others. So I don't want people to pay for the service. I, it does make my life a lot easier if they would enjoy giving me money so I can give it to others. See the difference? I don't want people to give me what it's worth. I want them to give me what they would enjoy giving so that I can keep giving it to others. I want them to see that I can give it to them because I have, I, I have my resources enough that I can give you this service. But it would sure make my life a lot easier in giving it to others to get some money. But please make sure that it's not a payment. Please make sure it's meeting your need for meaning to contribute to somebody else getting this. Now the problem is this usually takes me a day to get people conscious of this. So like on certain IITs, when the people wanted to really look at money and redo it, we gave everybody their money back and spent a whole day really looking at how to do this. And then I would make a request of them, what I would like to receive for this that would help me to keep giving this to others. But please, before you agree to any amount, make sure it is a gift that you're doing it to meet your needs to contribute to other people getting this. Get the concept of payment out of your conscience. I don't want any money paid to me. Only if you could, it meets your needs. On three of the four times I've done that in IIT, I've gotten 40% more money. And one time I got half as much, and I was very happy to get half as much, because that was in a country where when I heard what the people sacrificed to get there, uh, I was very happy to get half as much. But what about this thing that comes get me to say that's just kind of a psychological manipulation? That's why I say I need a whole day, because this is not an easy thing to get across to people. And I learned the hard way it takes a while, because after that woman and I had that conversation on the phone, I stopped charging any money for my services. And I would ask people if they would enjoy giving. By the door, you'll see a box. Give me what you would like to give me. And within a very short time, I was getting almost zero money. So I would start to have some dialogue with the people that I knew well and to find out. And then I could see that it was too radical to them. They didn't. And they would tell me, well, Marshall, I, I, I just assume you didn't need the money. Or, uh, and I could see, and then at that time I was starting to travel and I was doing a lot of work in San Diego and I asked the woman, uh, Ani, would you um, set up my appointments for me, an hour with each person? I was staying at her house, so I was doing my private work at her house. And so the second time I went back to work there, I noticed she set up each of my appointments for two hours instead of one hour. I said, Ani, how come two hours? She said, I noticed last time you spent an hour working with the people and an hour talking about money. <laughs> See, it took so long to get this across to people. So yeah, after a short time, uh, it's a pretty radical concept. So it takes a while to really get clear that uh, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or anything of the sort, but what would you enjoy giving? Somebody else has given me enough money to eat today. I don't need money to eat today. My rent is paid for this month. I don't need that. But to keep giving this to others. See, actually, this isn't that radical in the sense that when you go in and buy a coat, you're not paying for that coat. Other people had to have fed that person and gotten the coat delivered there and picked so you're, you're giving money so that somebody else can have a coat. I also learned how to deal with another touchy issue at that time, which was how not to pay taxes. 
because I did not want to give money to my government for what it was doing with it <clears throat> at that time. I was willing to give tax money for those things which I wanted to give it to, but not for the weaponry. So I was working in a social change project at the time so that taxpayers could choose what they didn't want the money to go to. So I would pay my regular taxes, but I would be assured that it wouldn't go to making weapons. But we weren't successful in passing that. So now what do I do? Do I keep giving money that I see is going to be used to bomb people in villages and so forth in a war I thought we had no right to be in to begin with? I didn't want to go to prison. But then uh, I found a way. I, and I, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I found that the law was such that if you gave away money so that you lived on a poverty income, you didn't have to pay any taxes. So I liked that idea of giving the money to where I wanted it to go to. And then it, it, was, it had a double bonus because it taught me that I could live just as happily on a poverty income as I was living on an affluent income. That was one of the best lessons I ever learned. I don't know that I could have learned that. If, in fact, it also had a hell of a lot more time to do things I really liked than shop uh, which had become kind of a habit, you know, to go shopping if you were bored and something. So, so what do you find out when you find out money? <laughs> Pardon? Sh shopping without money, how does that work? How does that work? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, you don't shop in as much, uh, you don't, you get the necessities. And then I found an, an economic system that worked for me uh, during the rough times. This economic system was with uh, two of my neighbors, uh, after I had to move out of my house into a smaller place. Two of my neighbors and I, we had our own economic system. We each promised not to all go broke at the same time. <laughs> and so really, it really worked well. When any one of us was broke, uh, we could always get money from the other. And uh, we kept laughing at it, that somehow or other, the divine energy of the system, uh, we were never all three broke at the same time. A corporation I was dealing with in, in uh, Basel. And a man called me in and said, uh, Marshall, it was very confusing to my associate when uh, my associate called and asked, you know, I wanted him to have you set up and work with our staff. And the, my associate got very confused about your discussion about money when he asked you what. <laughs> how much you charged, uh, he never understood it. So that's why I called you in today. Uh, so I tried to explain to him, and this guy got it, the boss, he got it. I understand, Marshall, but, but here's, the process, here's the problem. I, I love it. In fact, that's why I invited you. Uh, I heard you speak in my church, and I really want this training. But you got to understand how our organization works. If I want this money to give, any money to give you, I need to go to this department, and they, they will ask, how much does he charge? And if you charge within regular allotments, they'll... I said, I understand that. I understand that you're within that system. But I'm talking with you, and I'm telling you that I'm willing to give the service. And I'd like to get money for it. But So if you want to deal with that department business, I see your problem, but... I want to get clear with you. You're the guy that's asking me in here. I want you to give me the money, not pay me the money. He said, I love that, Marshall. Okay, what would you like to receive? <laughs> and I told him. He said, now that's going to be a real problem. I said, why? If I ask my supervisors for that, they're going to think you're not worth anything because most of the people we bring in, we pay three times that. And they'll then question what kind of a so how would you feel if I gave you three times that? I said, if you want to give me three times that, I'll take it. <laughs> but then that's up to you how you get the money, but I want it as a gift from you and not a payment. 